Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Wednesday. It's great to be with you this week. We're talking about prayer this week. Prayer is this mysterious gift that God gives us, uh, right? We know that nothing happens outside of the will of God, and yet we know that our prayers are powerful and effective. They change things uh, because God listens to his people. Those of us declared righteous through faith in Jesus Christ, they change things. Uh, he listens to our prayer. This is great mystery as we, uh, we, we can bring everything to him in prayer, pray, praise, and give thanks, and, and it makes a difference. Uh, y yesterday, uh, we talked about how, how Jesus uh, even, even told a story and taught on never giving up to, uh, this idea of praying to our Heavenly Father. Huh? Today, we're going to look at one of my favorite uh, uh, texts or stories uh, about prayers in the book of Acts. Uh, it, was, um, it, it was written down for us. Um, see if you enjoy it as much as I do. All right. It begins like this. Uh, this section begins like this. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. All right. So what does that mean, intending to persecute them? Right. It's going to give them a harsh talking to. Now, it says here he had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. And this may have some say that he was uh, not just beheaded, but perhaps skinned alive, a horrible way to die. Uh, whatever it might be, he had him killed. He had him murdered. All right. So so when it says here he's going to persecute the church, um, th this is not a this is not a little thing. He's going to he's going to start killing people. So what, why is he going to do this? Well, it says here, when he saw that this pleased the Jews, see the leaders uh, of the, the, of the political leaders of the Jewish nation, they wanted to consolidate their power. They didn't like the Christians around. Uh, they would be willing to support Herod if he supported them. Uh, and so they had this thing going and, and the Christians were caught in the middle, right? Uh, so when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. So he, uh, he uh, arrested Peter. Uh, and, and he was going to be killed too. It, it goes on here. It says, this happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You have this historical point in here. Uh, you uh, see an eyewitness had to be writing this or, or someone who, who was there and he was, the, who was writing this was listening to him, right? Oh, it was during the Passover feast. See, we get this all through scripture. This is, these are historical accounts, right? So uh, this happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each, so they were chained to him, right? Uh, four soldiers, uh, four, uh, four squads, four soldiers around the clock. They were chained to Peter. He was he was a a high uh, uh, priority prisoner, right? Uh, and and he he was going to be guarded, uh, and he was not going to get away uh, with with all of the might and power that Herod had. He was going to keep Peter in prison. That that's what this is saying. And and, and what was his plans for Peter? Uh, Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So we're going to have a sham trial, and he would be killed as well. So this, And then it says this, so Peter was kept in prison, and then you have this other storyline. Uh, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. But the church, and the, the word here is ecclesia, the word is this gathering of God's people, they were praying for him. So Peter was in prison, but something else was happening here. Huh? He, Peter was held in prison with all the might and power uh, of, of Herod, the Roman Empire. But the church, in seeming total weakness, was praying for him. Uh, and, and then you have the story about an angel came and, and uh, Peter was sleeping. He was chained to the guards and he was sleeping. And the, the angel came and the, the chains fell off and he brought him through the, the uh, uh, doors, the um, the, the, the prison doors and so forth. And Peter thought he was having a vision. Uh, and, and yet he, he realized when he was outside the jail, it says he came to a sense and he realized, oh, this really happened. Okay, so that, that's where we're going to pick it up. And it says here, then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. So, so he, he said, whoa, I'm really free. God did this. So what did he do? When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, uh, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. So you had many people gathering there and praying for him. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. So she runs back to everybody who's praying, for Peter, praying to God, the Almighty God, trusting that their prayers are powerful, right? Uh, that, that God's going to get Peter out. And, and the girl says, Peter's at the door. God heard your prayer, right? Peter's at the door. So what do you think they did? You think they said, well, of course, of course, God's going to hear our prayer. 
Of course she's going to act. No, this is what they said. You're out of your mind. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, well, it must be his angel. It was a, a belief that they may have had, right? Oh, it must be his angel. Can't be him. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought them out of prison, had brought him out of prison. They were astonished. I love this story because we talk about the power of prayer. We say, pray, pray all the time. Um, but do we really believe that God's going to act? And sometimes when he does, we, we are just astounded, right? Um, but here's the key. God always acts when he hears our prayers. He always hears us. They always change things. Sometimes we can see it with these eyes, and sometimes we can't. But God is always at work, uh, and our prayers always make a difference. This is su such an amazing story, because you had these early Christians who walked by faith, who prayed fervently, and when God answered their prayer in a way they could see it, they couldn't hardly believe it. So as we pray, um, let's pray believing that God will hear our prayer and, and he will act. Certainly in his way, in his time, but he will act and our prayers will make a difference. Let's pray. Father, um, man, I thank you for this story. I know this touches me, um, really challenges me to what it means to, to pray uh, in, in faith, believing uh, that you will act uh, Pray every day, Lord, that uh, you would empower each of us to pray in this way. Uh, even, um, even as this COVID-19 experience seems to get longer and things don't seem to change, uh, we pray that we might know that you're at work through all this and that our prayers make a difference and are powerful. Help us to pray for those who are close to us, to pray for our, our nation and our leaders and our world, uh, to pray for all those who are serving us, and to pray that, um, that, that folks in the medical field uh, might be able to quickly uh, uh, find uh, the, the antibodies that, that can crush uh, this virus as well. Help us to pray in, in all manner of ways, knowing and trusting that you will hear our prayers uh, and, and, that, um, and that you will answer them uh, and that you will act on our behalf. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Great to be with you today. One more day yet. Tomorrow. Bye-bye.